Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it's time for another Bulgarian workout. And uh, it's funny enough, this one, because I didn't trim much of the stuff off, I just dropped all the footage in place. It's actually over 10 minutes of training footage. Uh, if I just kind of leave them how they were for turning the camera on and off. So we're just kind of roll with that. We're going to leave it unedited and uh, you know, you guys will see me trying to crawl back up off the bench and everything. But, you know, I missed a bench press today. Um, and I'll talk about that in a minute. A uh, number of factors going on there because I felt good. I didn't feel sore. The squats weren't bad. Like I felt a little off balance. Like I felt like I slipped out of my groove slightly on the squat uh, with my 460 today. Um, but when I looked at the footage, it didn't really happen. It was a less than a two second concentric rep. So it looked good on camera. It just didn't feel good. And again, I didn't have any explanation. I felt fine today. Uh, I got a good night's sleep. I uh, got plenty of food in before I trained. Like, uh, I was well rested, you know, it just happened. Uh, but one of the things I noted, I got to the bench press and, you know, I've made two changes in the last week. I've increased my overhead press frequencies and you guys know how that goes. That's going to fatigue my bench a little bit till I get used to it. Um, I've improved my daily minimum 15 pounds in four weeks, right? I've added 15 pounds to my daily minimum on the bench. But I switched over to trying to bench flat footed. Uh, you combine that with the fact that I'm flat footed and it feels a little harder for me. I'm not used to that style of benching while keeping my heels flat. I've started, I pressed two days in a row before this, overhead pressed after benching, and I'm down like another pound, like the scale slowly going down. So, you know, that combination of things, my bench just didn't go good today. Uh, bench just didn't go good today. Uh, I missed a bench. Uh, but let's watch this squat for a minute here. You guys will see what I mean. I mean, it looks fine to me. When I'm looking at it on camera, uh, it looks no different than my really good uh, 460 on Monday, right? It looks just as clean. It just didn't feel it. Uh, so, but that's a good thing, you know, because sometimes how you feel is a lie. I felt good. The squat didn't feel good, but it looked fine. I mean, watch it, it comes down. It's less than a two second concentric. And I think part of it, I tried to get a stretch reflex on it today. Um, and it felt different because I usually pause at the bottom. And a lot of people say, hey, why do you pause? To make sure I get depth. Because I feel like sometimes if I try to get a stretch reflex, I feel like I'm shortchanging the depth. Even when I check it on camera, it'll be fine. I just instinctively feel like it. So I, I like to pause a lot more. Just that's my way of ensuring depth. I'm not actually always trying to pause. But today I'm like, well, I'm just going to get a stretch reflex. Uh, and it looked fine on camera. It just felt slightly out of my groove. And I didn't remember that until I started watching the footage. Oh, yeah, that's what happened. Uh, the bench, though, yeah, I mean, the fact that I'm down like a pound since two days ago. I'm losing weight slowly. Um, doing the, the flat heel thing, increase the frequency on my overhead press. Uh, I got stapled, you know, and it was a grinder. Like, I, I pushed for five or six seconds trying to lock it, trying to lock it, but I didn't want to cheat. You know, that's the other thing that you guys need to remember. Like, you don't ever want to get in the habit of shifting and using bad form to grind a weight up. You know, so I just pushed on it and pushed on it and tried to push myself further into the bench, push myself away from the bar, and it was inching up slowly. But then it, I just gave out. Um, and could that be tricep fatigue? Maybe. Because, you know, that's the other thing. I always tell people, like the guys like Paul Carter say, your bench press is almost never your lockout for a raw bench, or that's a myth. Very rarely. It almost feels like I could be the exception. But I don't know that that's the case. I think I'm just running at too high of an RPE for myself right now. I might need to scale the bench back to 315 while I'm doing the overhead pressing six days a week also, right? Uh, scale it back to 315 for a week or so. It might be what I need to do. Quit doing this flat heel thing. Go ahead and get back on the balls of my feet, which I enjoy. Uh, the way I want a bench. And I can always go back and mess with the flat heel later. I can alternate them around um, and get really explosive again off my chest with 315, right? I need to get it to explode fast. I need to build that speed. Uh, because, yeah, this 320, I mean, I didn't get it today. And I've been doing this for a week and a half. It's been my daily minimum. You know, I've been doing this six days a week. I've been doing this 320. Um, you know, and it's going to happen. You're going to miss lifts. And the thing is, I had no warning. Normally, I would say your body will tell you. When I unracked it, I gripped that bar hard and it felt lighter than usual. When I unracked it, I'm like, oh, this is going to be easy. This is no problem. 
because usually when you're going to miss a lift, a lot of times a squat or a bench, it feels heavy in your hands or heavy on your back, and it didn't. So that's what threw me off a little bit. That's why I went ahead and went for it um, in spite of the fatigue because I unracked it and it felt light. I'm like, okay, I got this because that's usually a characteristic and it just didn't happen for me today. Here it goes down, got a pause, right there, stuck. See, that's an illegal lift right there. That'd be disqualified in comp, that left side, that downward movement. And then I had to put it on the safeties and crawl out. So a lot of people are like, is your setup's not safe? You need a spotter? No, I don't. Look at that. Perfectly fine. Uh, Chin-ups, uh, the connective tissue's finally gone away in the left bicep. However, my heavy chin-up, my, my maxes on my chins, it's making that left bicep throb, not at the tendon, but in the muscle belly. So my biceps are really, really a limiting factor right now on these. Uh, you know, and am I doing a little extra bicep work? Yeah, I'm doing a, a kind of a, a curl variation that's a compound a couple days a week. I could probably increase it. I need to do it today um, just to help with that. But my chin-ups are go they're improving. They're improving. So I'm not going to complain. Uh, I'm getting better at them. In fact, the 55, this felt like this used to be my daily minimum. Right now, this is part of my ramp up. It was easy. Just boom, nothing. So I go to the 90, and the 90 was a little tough today. I'm not going to lie. It was hard. It wasn't easy, but I got it. Uh, but the thing is, my biceps are definitely my limiting factor right now. But at least my forearms aren't a problem because I'm not trying to risk curl up. I'm only getting, if my chin gets to the bar or even an inch above the bar, that's good. I'm done. Um, because again, it's coming down to connective tissue pain in that left bicep, the one I've torn before. And the muscles itself are a limiting factor, and I just can't afford to strain that connective tissue. Um, you know, so I don't try to get that last two inches and wrist curl myself up because at that point I'm not even using the muscles I'm supposed to be using anymore. And, you know, and this is a lift that I want to get strong just because it's really popular because I also say it's a great lift uh, in general for overall development. It's not a contested lift. Uh, and to me, getting that pause at the bottom is the most important. You want that dead hang. There we go. There we go. Because that's what really gives you that stretch that you want. I think that's some of the most value out of this exercise comes from getting that stretch at the bottom, particularly for things like getting the long head of your tricep, getting extra bicep, getting the lats. Uh, and there's other muscles that are more involved as you get further up the top. And I'm not saying those aren't important muscles, but a lot of those muscles get trained with my deadlifting and other stuff too. So, you know, not worth damaging a tendon and needing surgery again over. It's just not worth it to me. So I live with it. I have to set my ego to the side on that. Um, presses was okay today. I went ahead and went with uh, 205 and I went with 215. The 205 felt a little heavy and I'm like, oh wait, I forgot to close my belt. My belt was open. So when we get to it, I'm like, well, let me go ahead and go up to 215 because the 205, <laughs> I did that beltless. And once I closed the belt, you can see I left my belt open there. It's all loose. See that? So yeah, it felt a little tough, but I went to 215 and it was easy. The 215 was easy. So, you know, goes to show you how much a belt gives on the press. It gives a lot because that felt heavier than the 215 did with the belt. Of course, you guys have seen me do 225 while I'm leaving the belt open, but it was hard. It was a grinder. It was a grinder. The 215 was easy today. So I think this is a kind of a good baseline because I failed a bench. I failed a bench and I come back a couple hours later and did this. So uh, failing the bench didn't stop me from getting an easy 215. So I think this is what we're going to try to work towards every day. Get this 215. If we can get this every day by over, for six days a week, my overall pressing strength will go up. And that's good. We'll get the, the extra development we want. It'll hopefully carry over to the bench. Uh, then I did my trap bar deadlifts. And I'm back to what I said I was going to do at least five days a week. I'm just going to do one triple. Uh, I went up slightly. This is my warm up. I do one warm up. Then I do the peak set. I'm just going to do a moderately heavy triple and keep increasing it. And like I said, I'll be above 500 for triples pretty quick on this. And this is, again, just a good overall exercise. I've discussed in the past the benefits of the trap bar. Uh, once I get my hook grip down, once I have the respectable strength again, I will eventually rotate the conventional deadlift back in. But right now, I don't need it. I can get my overall strength and development with a trap bar. Uh, without any recovery issues uh, involving the deadlift to the same extent that the conventional might give. And just use this. It's a good general purpose strength tool. Uh, and when I want to get my conventional deadlift back up, I'll make sure my hook grip is down, that it's mastered, and we'll do the conventional deadlift and we'll get good at it again too. So I hope this has been informative. 
and I will talk to you guys next time.